I think we're there, you know, inflation, uh, you know, moderated just a little bit, you know, with the CPI coming out today, um, you know, and the yield curve is extremely negative right now. It, it hasn't been this negative in decades. Right. Mm -hmm. And and now here comes the U.S. government spending seven hundred billion dollars on you know the new green, um, yeah, the you know the, the, a lot of stuff was in there and you know a lot of special interest stuff. So when you're looking at some of some of I mean you're a stock analyst guy, yeah. When you're looking at these these companies, the the silver the silver producing companies that you like to follow, what's the key thing that you want to look for right now? Is it is it just you want low cost producers, high margin? Or high yeah. high grade mines with low cost yeah. production. Yeah, that's it. Uh, high grade, low costs. Um, you know the the silver miners, their margins are really volatile. Uh, they range they're they're about fourteen uh, percent uh, profit margin right now, because you know their average cost is about seventeen dollars and fifty cents. With silver at what nineteen fifty twenty bucks, you know the margins are razor thin. They're much smaller than gold margins. Gold gold miner mm -hmm. margins are much more stable. They range between forty percent and six percent. And then if you chart like the GDX versus margins, it tracks, you know, right on the correlations like 100%. And if you track the SIL ETF with silver miner margins, um, it tracks, you know, right on. That's what miners trade off. They trade off margins. And right now, um, the average silver miner um, is trading, it, it has a 14% profit margin. Um, but the thing is, if you run a uh, regression uh, of um margins and costs right now the average silver mine is about 30 percent undervalued you know and in this it, it doesn't happen very often and this is why you own the silver miners because they're extremely leveraged their profit margins go from zero to ten percent to fifty percent in a span of a month and, and then the oh, yeah. but the thing is you need to get through the lean times and the lean times unfortunately are long like 90 percent of the time silver doesn't do anything it lags it lags it lags and then 10 percent of the time it goes boom, through the roof and that's what you want right. to own it for but you, you need to find the low cost miners because if you don't own the low cost miners, then uh, they're going to be diluting. They're going to be issuing more shares every year. I took a look at the GDXJ and I took a look at the components of it and how many shares the components of the GDXJ issue. It's about a 10% a year rate. And, um, you know, if you're not adding any value and all you're doing is selling shares, that 10% a year really adds up and it's hard to overcome um, with value creation when silver, you know, explodes higher. So, you know, you want to stick with the high grade, which leads to low cost, which leads to profit profitability because uh you know they're making money and they're not leaky buckets where all the money's flowing into the management pockets yeah and they're not issuing shares they're not issuing, they're not the issuing shares. i mean sometimes they do if they're like funding an expansion yeah like i think like a good example of that is um aya aya gold yeah. and silver um yeah. they're they are funding an expansion from two million mm -hmm. ounces up to eight million ounces yep but it totally makes sense because this is a profitable company that's making money every quarter yep. and high grade low cost you yep. know something like i gold and silver that fits your model for yeah um, no doubt it's it's stocks where you're not gonna where, where yeah. the management's doing the right thing yeah because you know um you know they're doing that raise to increase production and they do a feasibility study and they know what the cost the capex costs are and sometimes they need to raise that capital they raise the capital they build it um, if they do a good job, they'll uh, build it on time and on budget, and it'll lead to increased production and increased splash cash flow, and you can build that right into your model. Um, it's just the ones that you know issue shares for no reason with nothing to show for it. And if, if they're issuing, I, you know, it's it's hard. Like um, you look at stock price charts, they're easy, right? You find them on Yahoo, you find them on Google. But the interesting charts that I like to look at are share price, shares outstanding charts. Um, you know, I'm lucky to have enough of Bloomberg, so I'm able to see, you know, shares outstanding for any different company that I want to take a look at, but you need to look at the shares outstanding and see whether they're adding value to all those shares that are being issued or not. And yeah. how you do this. So would you put, who would you put in this category of worthwhile listening to? So Aya Gold and Silver is one of them. Obviously. Yeah. Um, next, next one I wanted to show you is Silvercrest Metals. Would that fall in that same category of worth looking at because they're doing it the right way? Yeah, you know, it comes down to knowing the people. I go to the Denver Gold Show every year, and I go up to PDAC uh, most of the time. So, you know, I get to really, I get to know the people in the industry very well. And there's good right. guys, bad guys. And uh, I've known Eric Fear with uh, Silvercrest One. 
um, that got bought out by First Majestic. And he is an extremely frugal guy, and he looks to uh, start projects with low-cost open pits, um, and then he kind of bootstraps into a sort of mill sort of process, and he did that, and it led to extremely profitable production at Silvercrest, um, Silvercrest Mining, which was a 1.0, the first iteration, and then it led directly into Silvercrest Metals, which was Silvercrest, uh, you know, iteration 2.0, and that whole story is really interesting because First Majestic bought uh, Silvercrest Mining, and they went in negotiations and uh the first thing eric did he goes listen you can have everything but this little block right here and this huge map just you know it looks <laughs> like a few square miles he goes i'm gonna keep this for myself because you know i've looked at it it looks interesting and he's like all right no problem i'm getting 99 percent on the property and you know you can have that but then right eric knew right when they started um you know drilling that off the grades on that were amazing and the, the amount of money that they spent like they raised capital to drill and if you look at the amount of um amount of ounces found or in the amount of value created per, per the amount of um, money that they raise they're paying like 12 cents an ounce for every ounce of silver that they found and then wow. they, they basically um built the uh the mill on time and on budget um and it's being commissioned right now the there it's an extremely low cost producer because the grades through the charts it's got an average grade god of like a thousand grams a ton this is this is silver equivalent it's, it's mostly gold it's like 60 60 40 gold silver but yeah. if you convert to silver it's over a thousand grams a ton which leads to really low cost so they should be producing at about seven dollars an ounce um, so whether the price of silver is at 15 or 25, it doesn't matter. This company is going to be raking in the money. And uh, Eric's a guy that does it well. He's he's a value creator, and he's you know one of the guys to follow in the industry. Yeah, I, I um, I've talked with these guys. That's they're definitely doing it right, and they're going to make money at any price of silver that you're likely to see. And and this company, if silver goes higher, 25, 30, this that that this this company is just going to be raking in the money. Yeah. Um, so very smart operators, which is what you want to do. Another one that's very profitable that doesn't get probably the credit that they deserve um, for being such smart operators is Silver Corp Metals. Yeah. And um, it trades at a huge, you know, this is a company producing six or seven million ounces a year. Yeah. They're expanding right now up to 12 million ounces a year. Oh. And they're always profitable. They don't dilute. They pay yeah. a dividend. They do share buybacks. Yeah. And, you know, it's, I think the only negative about this company is, or it's not even real, is it's in China, but they're doing it all right, aren't they? Yeah. I, um, I'm, I know Sir Rukas, uh, very well. I know Ray. Uh, the guy that runs it um and they they were one of my favorite silver companies on a valuation basis a few years ago and the stock doubled we did great on it but you know I, i'm an analyst i look at the numbers i look at the financial these companies um basically mm -hmm. all if you look at their news releases all their news releases are like oh we made so much money if you use if we use gold and copper as a byproduct our cash costs were negative 12 dollars. It's, it's all bullshit. i do all these things on an apples to apples basis I, I i i get to know which ones are truly profitable which ones are you know just blowing smoke silver core makes money every single quarter um and you know like you said they've been issuing a dividend for a long time uh they buy back shares every quarter they are you know the real deal one thing that i found amusing this quarter there are a few silver companies out there that are marginally profitable they got um they announced um that they're going to be buying back shares but then they're also renewing their atm facilities right their atm at the market uh share offering so it's like, and they can sell anytime they can yeah, yeah what are you doing you're <laughs> going to be selling shares you can be buying shares but yeah silvercore uh they're able to buy back shares and uh that's what you're able to do with free cash you're able to pay dividends you're able to uh buy back shares you're able to uh you know uh, look at uh, growth opportunities um and silvercore has been doing it consistently for years and yeah that's yeah. You know, that, those are one of the good guys and one of the things regarding Silvercore is they own um, a good chunk of uh, New Pacific Mining. You know New yeah. Pacific Mining? They're in Bolivia. I went down and visited them um, a month or two ago. Um, they have, uh, they hit in wide widths of like 500 meters of, you know, 100 grams a ton silver, which isn't crazy high grade, but the widths are amazing. So, you know, and Roy, uh, Roy is, uh, he Ray is affiliated, yeah, Ray, Ray, he's affiliated with uh, New Pacific in Bolivia and he owns a chunk of shares too. So, you know, get, you know, um, if you look at South America, it's a pretty sketchy place to operate. Bolivia is becoming one of the better countries to operate. Um, and, yeah. you know, Ray knows what I've, he's doing. I've heard that also. The, 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 the interesting thing about Silvercorp is they're sitting on $200 million in cash. 
Yeah. Their, yeah. Invest, their investments in all these other companies that they have is worth another 200 plus million. Mm -hmm. And uh, the total market cap of the company is only 600 million. It's like you're getting all their production in China mm -hmm. for almost <laughs> for free. <laughs> Almost at like one, one point, one times cash flow. It, it's ridiculous how cheap it is. Yeah. 